determine the waveforms at points A and B. If you are going to have a problem like this, you're supposed to look at the input waveform first. Draw the dashed lines from any point of the input waveform when you are going to notice any change, I mean transition from 0 to 1 or from 1 to 0. Okay, and we have another change over here, and we have another change over here from high to low. So, please keep in mind, this is your zero level and this is your high level, or one. In other words, we can say this is zero, this is one, this is zero, this is one, and this is zero. We have to determine the waveform, which is going to appear at point A, and waveform, which is going to appear at point B. Let me start from waveform, which is going to be at point A first. Input. First, we are going to apply zero. Zero to this input, okay? Zero is going to come to this point, and this zero is going to be inverted to one. This one is going to be inverted again to zero. So, I'm going to have zero at the output. Now, please notice that in this part of the diagram we have no inverter. So, basically, this one is going to go directly to B. So, if I have 0 at the input, B is going to be 1. Now, let's see what will happen if I'm going to apply 1 to the input. This one is going to be inverted, and I'm going to have over here 0. This 0 will go to this inverter, and I'm going to have 1 at point A. That's why I have to write 1 over here. 0 will go directly to point B. That's why this is going to be 0. Let's practice, and let's do the same analysis one more time. Okay, let me erase these logic levels. And again, we are going to apply 0 to the input. 0 is going to be inverted. I'm going to have 1. This 1 will be inverted to 0. So, A is going to be 0. And this 1 will go directly to B. That's why I'm going to have 1 over here. Now, let's take a look at the input waveform and waveform at point A. We have 0 at the input and 0 at point A, and we have high at the input and high at point A, and we have 0 at the input again and 0 at point A. So basically, we can see the pattern that basically point A is going to have exactly the same waveform like we have at the input. That's why we don't supposed to do a further investigation, just simply copy the input waveform okay, at this axis. Okay, because this is basically the same waveform like the input one. Now B we have like complement of the input and we have input is 1, point B had 0. So, please notice that the waveform at point B is nothing else just the complement of the input waveform. That's why I'm not going to make further analysis, just simply draw the inverted input waveform, alright, at my point B. This is going to be 0. And this is 1. So this is the timing diagram, which is basically the solution to my problem, because I found what waveforms I'm going to have at point A and point B for given input waveform.